Welcome to the PROACT Toolsets Lesson 1 Problem – Defining the Decision Problem This lesson covers the PR – Problem in the PROACT decision making process. Understanding why we need to make a decision is important if we're going to make good choices. In our impatience to get started, we run the risk of not adequately defining the problem that is causing us to make the decision. If we're going to make good choices, we must define what's called the decision problem, the problem that is forcing us to make a decision. This lesson consists of this presentation together with a lesson guide to help you define your decision problem. In this presentation, we'll look at five ways to help you define your decision problem, cover the benefits of asking others how they see your situation, and discuss the importance of revisiting your decision problem as you work through the PROACT process. Answering the following question can prove a challenge for some of us. When asked what's on our mind, it's not always easy to put our thoughts into words. To make matters worse, as we answer questions about the problem, we might find that our answers don't exactly match the original problem in our head. For example, what started off in our head as, I need to get a new car, through questioning and verbalising, the problem might become, I need to get to work in a way that's cheaper than my gas guzzling 4x4. To be clear about what the problem is, you need to write down your thoughts to check whether you really understand them. Be creative in the way that you state the problem, since this will help you with the next step of the PROACT process, objectives. For instance, rather than describing a weight loss problem this way, I need to find a new diet to help me lose weight, a little creativity introduces a new angle to the problem. I need to find ways of making myself look and feel healthier. There are five techniques that you can use to help you define your decision problem. Understand what triggered it. Identify any constraints. Break down your situation into its constituent pieces. Understand how your current problem is affected by previous decisions and how the decision you'll make will affect future ones. And decide whether the scope of your decision is either too broad or too narrow. Triggers. This approach involves finding what happened, the trigger, that led to the problem. A trigger might be a conversation, an event, or perhaps a request, something that initiated the problem. Having identified the trigger, check that it isn't limiting the way that you perceive the problem. For example, you notice while looking through your jacket pockets that you have two receipts for filling up the car with gas during the past week. This triggers the realisation that what you spent this week on getting to and from work used to cover your gas bills for a fortnight. Your immediate thought is a decision about whether to sell the 4x4 and buy a more fuel efficient car. This reaction may be closing you off to other alternatives to saving on your travel costs, such as carpooling or using public transport. Constraints Imagine that you're trying to decide when to hold an off-site two-day planning meeting for your work colleagues. Your problem's constraints are that it 1. involves a meeting, 2. is off-site, and 3. lasts two days. In order to get the planning done, does it have to happen off-site, does it require a meeting, and does it require two days? Losing one or more of these constraints, especially when they're not necessary or important, creates a whole new set of options that you may not have considered. While constraints can be useful, Check to see if they're misinforming you about the nature of the problem. Constituents Breaking your problem down into pieces helps you to identify what is at its core, which will then help you to reach a decision that meets your needs. For instance, when deciding whether to enrol on a part-time course, things that may influence your decision might include the time commitment, your interest in the subject, the cost of the course, the opportunity to apply what you've learned, and whether or not the course provides a recognised qualification. Finding those parts of the problem that are important to you makes the problem more specific, which can then be leveraged in the next step of the PROACT process, objectives. Previous and future decisions. Decisions don't often exist in isolation. The decision we want to make today is a consequence of decisions made in the past while whatever we decide on in the present will influence the decisions we'll face tomorrow. While it's almost impossible to anticipate all the consequences of a decision, 
it's a good idea to consider those that we're certain will influence decisions later on. For example, when deciding whether to accept a job in a new city, knowing that your decision will influence the following will help clarify your decision problem. That your daughter will start school next year. How you will travel to work because you sold your 4x4 and now use public transport. And whether to sell your current home or rent it. Scope. It won't help you if the scope of your problem is either too broad or too narrow. You know that the scope of your problem is too broad when you realise that it involves having to make more than one decision. For example, deciding what to do with a large sum of money you have inherited may involve decisions about whether you want to change your lifestyle, how you want to provide security for your family, how to invest the money, and so on. On the other hand, be careful when defining a problem that is too narrow in scope since the decision you make creates a solution that might not resolve a broader issue. For instance, learning that you're about to be made redundant from your role as a retail shop manager and then deciding to look for a similar job in shops nearby. Talk to others about your situation. Talking to someone whom you trust and respect about your decision problem can help provide fresh insights through the questions they ask and the clarification they seek. Even if they're unable to offer new ideas, just describing the decision problem to them will help clarify it for you. When it's not possible to talk to anyone, ask yourself how someone you admire might see the problem and go about defining it. Seeing the problem through another's eyes, adopting their persona, helps you to see the problem from a different perspective and might identify gaps in your thinking. Revisiting your decision problem. As you work through the proact process, it's important to revisit your decision problem to check whether it's still relevant to you. Your situation could change and as a consequence your decision problem may no longer be relevant, so it's important to regularly ask yourself, am I working on the right problem? For example, deciding whether you and your partner should rent an apartment in a more expensive part of town becomes impractical when you learn that there's a baby on the way and that, instead, you need to decide whether or not to move to a more family-friendly neighbourhood. Checking whether or not to redefine your decision problem often leads to better decisions. Developing a good decision problem takes time, but the more time invested in defining it increases the probability of making a good decision.